Alright, hi and welcome. Today we are going to be talking about scatter plots and linear regression in Algebra 1A. And the big, big things that we're going to be talking about is setting up your data plot, uh, making a line of best fit by approximation, and we're also going to talk about correlation and stuff, okay? So without further ado, let's go to GeoGebra. I had to think about it for a second, GeoGebra.org. So GeoGebra.org is a Chrome web app that helps you actually graph and do everything that you need to do for working with scatter plots and stuff. Okay, uh, before we get there just yet, we're going to talk about each one of these definitions. Okay, so first off, what we're going to be talking about is the type of correlations that we're going to need to do. Okay, so let's say that your scatter plot actually turns out to look like this. Okay, so what this is, this is going to be positive correlation. So a positive correlation means that there's a relationship between the two variables, or there's a there's there's a positive uh, relation kind of a relationship between the two variables. It doesn't mean a causation though. There's there's some tricky language in that. So there's just a correlation, there's just a relationship between the two variables. The two variables could be totally unrelated, but there could be a positive relationship between them. Which in other words, which means uh, as one goes up, the other one does as well. Okay. Now negative correlation is going to look really quite different. So let me get rid of all these data points. Okay, negative correlation is going to look a little bit more skewed downwards. Okay, and that's going to be negative correlation. And what that represents is as one goes up in value, one variable, the other one goes down. Okay, so it's just it's, there's a negative relationship between them, uh, almost an inverse proportion type idea. Okay, all right, now what about something that looks a lot more so like no correlation? Uh, that just means they're just randomly put about. And they're not really closely put together. They're just dots that appear. No correlation would look, would look more like this graph right here, this type of scatter plot as we work with it. Okay. All right. Now, what I want to do is I want to show you GeoGebra so we can actually work with these a little bit easier. Okay. So what I am in is in GeoGebra, I'm in the spreadsheet option. And what I do is I have a graph over here to the right and I have my data points in here. And this is from problem one in your textbook talking about the altitude of an airplane and the temperature outside of the plane, which, you know, kind of makes sense. Now, if you kind of look at this common sense wise, as you go higher in altitude, the air temperature outside the plane is a little bit chillier, okay, as you go up. And this is all in Fahrenheit, by the way. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually plot this data. So what you do is you go up here to two variable regression analysis. Now you guys aren't going to be using that as much, uh, understanding that, but you highlight the sections and you just go two variable analysis. And we're going to bring our focus over here to this graph. And this is actually going to be the graph of the data points. And you can actually take a screenshot of this and send this to me just to work with and stuff. So this is actually kind of cool that you guys can actually have a place where you can do scatter plot. Okay. All right. Now you can do all kinds of cool things on here. Uh, one of the biggest things is make your line the best fit. So now originally what you guys are going to do is you're going to select two points that you may think make the best fit line. You're going to find the slope between them and then use that to find the y-intercept. Okay. Now, obviously, your y-intercept is going to be a little bit ridiculously high in temperature and stuff, but, you know, that's just how it is. Now, what you can do is go down here and go to the regression model, the, the actual one, and go linear equation, and you can actually see it pop up here. So this is just a good way to check your work to see if you're actually doing, a, if you're picking the two best points to actually do a regression model. And I usually like to think of Whenever I'm estimating, I try to get one that's like right in the middle of everything that gives that. Okay, now, uh, this is also a trend line uh, that helps find the point. I, most people interpret this as a trend line. This is actually a, a linear, uh, 
This is called an LSRL, uh, a least squared uh, regression line. Okay, for the actual model. So it's, it's it takes it actually does a whole lot of great stuff to actually find this slope and this 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 problem, this this linear equation for this actual graph. Now, um, we already know. And it, here, let's take that away for a sec. So let's take that away. So if we take a look at this model, we know that it's going to have a negative correlation. What kind of negative correlation? We don't know. You'll actually discover that in statistics later on. But for right now, you know that it is a negative correlation. And if it was going up the other direction, it would be a positive correlation. If there was no real shape, well, obviously, no correlation. The thing that you guys are going to be doing is predicting this stuff. So you'll be finding between these two points, finding the slope, and then just predicting it the best you can. Now, this is a prediction model. And unbeknownst to you guys, uh, you've been dealing with precise models where you can actually use it to predict future stuff. In statistics, when you're actually using data, you can't do that as well. You 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 can use it to predict um, data points in the future. Like for example, if I get higher, I'm going to get negative. According to this, this is going to go down in temperature, which does kind of make sense because there's no temperature and stuff. But um, we know that at a certain point it's going to plateau and it, the, the temperature is just going to be the same as usual. Okay, just the highest. And plus, you can't go really too much negative because, you know, Kelvin uh, degree temperatures are the big thing. But for this point in time being, you guys can actually use this stuff uh, on GeoGebra to actually make it. So, once again, you go over here to the scatter plot or the, 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 the spreadsheet data. You put it into there, okay, and you go up here, you select two variable regression analysis, make sure you highlight everything first, and then you select that and you can actually work with it, okay? Alright, and then when you're looking at your scatter plot, always take a look at your scatter plot and make sure you guys take time to understand what's going on. Okay, now a prediction model, real fast. Uh, for example, if you were to pick a data point, like let's say 1200, so 1200 is right here, what would the temperature be right there? And so that's where you would actually plug in the data. Okay, so your equation, for example, on this one, you would plug in 1200 into here, multiply it by negative 1 one hundredth, and add 66.37 to it to get the actual temperature model of it. And stuff, and it's actually really kind of cool how it works. I like I like how prediction models work. Uh, for you guys, however, please, please, please take the time to think about the common sense of the problem. And remember, whenever working with information, you want to be careful to not make strange guesses that just go off in wild tangents that you can't rein back in. Now, there are a couple more vocab words that we do need to know, interpolation and extrapolation. Extrapolation is when you make predictions outside of, uh, in front or behind uh, the lowest values on here. Okay, so that's, that's extrapolation. And interpolation is what happens if I make predictions based on data points that aren't represented here. Like, for example, the 1200 question I just asked. Or what if you're wondering, like, what happens at 2700 square? at the 2,700 uh, feet in the air, what is the temperature in Fahrenheit then? Okay, so there you go. All right, let's go back and talk about our definitions and stuff, okay? So we've talked about negative correlation, no correlation, positive correlation. We've actually seen a regression line and a line of best fit, so you can actually interpret those. You guys can make your own scatter plots, but I highly recommend using GeoGebra org for yours. Okay, uh, the, now the correlation coefficient, real fast, the correlation coefficient can actually be on a wide range of numbers. Okay, so there's zero at this end, one at this end, and negative one right here. Okay, so now if my data is very negatively correlated, it would be more towards negative one. Okay, if the closer it is, to a best fit line for positive correlation, it would be more towards uh, one. And in the beginning, you guys are going to actually be guesstimating on that stuff. You're you're going to actually be interpreting 
you know what you think is the best possible fit so like for example I would say this looks pretty darn good this looks like a good now if I were to draw my line at this fit I would probably have it look like this everything looks pretty close I would probably say and it's called R my R would probably be about 0 0.9 you know something that looks like that okay whereas if I had a graph that looked something like this it would still be a positive correlation obviously I'm just kind of drawing it out the best I can now I could have the same line of best fit and stuff but my R is going to be a little bit different it's not as strong not everything's as close so this would probably be like 0 0.65 is my guess okay and there's some really cool uh, stuff out there that you can actually play some games with guessing correlation and stuff so go check it out on Google all right all right that's it for algebra 1a scatter plots and linear regression I'll talk to you later